This is a program about going deeper. It's about creating a culture of learning. It's about putting apostolic feet to prophetic hope. It is our mission to purposefully equip the world to transform their region with God's love. We want to create an atmosphere of divine influence to the nations by walking in the power of His Holy Spirit with a faith that shapes the future. Welcome to Eagle Mountain Radio. Hey everybody, welcome to Eagle Mountain Radio. My name is Chris Benke and I'll be your host today. I've got with me in the studio, Bobby Hobby. He's the senior leader at Eagle Mountain and also advisor of Kingdom Learning. Bobby, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Doing good. good. I'm doing really good because we also have with us a whole host of amazing guests yes, we that do. are all with us online right now. We've got Johnny and Elizabeth Enlow. We've got Kat Kerr. We've got Nathan French and Steve Schultz. So I'm super excited for this opportunity today yes. to talk to these incredible people. Yes. To all of you listening, you're going to be amazed at what God's doing. So let's start off by talking about why we're all together with these amazing people today on this podcast. Well, Johnny and Elizabeth from Restore 7 have become great friends to Becky and me and to our house. And as many of you may know, we are hosting a Rise Summit with them. This is Johnny and Elizabeth's uh, vision to do something amazing. And we get to host it here in our facility with our team. As an apostolic resource center, that's what we love to do is partner with anointed ministries around the globe and serve their vision. A few years ago, we got the pleasure of having Johnny and Elizabeth at one of our Hub Nation conferences, and yeah, we just instantly awesome. fell in love with them. And so at the first of the year, we knew that we were supposed to partner with them in this yeah. way. It's coming right up. So if you're listening to this live, it's coming up next week. We'll yes. put links in the show notes. You're going to want to register. Um, and if you're listening to this far off in the future, you're going to want to go back and find it and still sign up and buy it and watch the material because it's going to be amazing. So in the pre-show, we were talking about this specific podcast, what we wanted to talk about. And we wanted to dive into, with this group of amazing thought leaders, the importance of being prepared and positioned for reformation. So I'd love to just start off by opening up to you guys and just say, what when we talk about being prepared and positioned, what does that really mean? What, what do we mean when we say that? I think we should start with Johnny and Elizabeth. I'm, uh, we're I calling on you guys. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll jump right in. And that'll uh, you know, put down, some it'll put some crust there that they can add some pepperoni and cheese. Yes, and we need else. the crust to start with. Thank you. <laughs> So, you know, the scripture that comes to mind is Matthew 16, 18. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And what we know is we've studied that word church. He did not use the word that they would have been familiar with, with that they would think of as church. He did not use the word temple or synagogue. He did not say, I'll build my temple and the gates of hell will not prevail. I will not, uh, I will build my synagogue nor temple, neither one of those. But he used a word that had never been used religiously before, ecclesia, where we get our word church in Spanish. It's even more direct. You know, it's iglesia, ecclesia, the, the Greek there. So he said, I will build my ecclesia and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So that word ecclesia is about, uh, it really was a, a civic gathering. It was the citizens called out to a public place to deal with the matters of the community. And so it really uh, did something that uh, it should have engendered a better model of church than it has for us today, because it was never about a silver tongue speaker. That was more the Greek way of doing something with everybody else being, uh, you know, the observers there. This was about activation of the entire body of Christ. This connects with Jesus' first message, uh, his first really uh, commandment to us, you are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world. And so this was a call for 100% of us to be activated. And this is what it, this is what it's all about to be a reformer. A reformer is one who recognizes you have an assignment to not just be a part of a good meeting in church, but to be part of the active ecclesia, the assembly of heaven, the government of heaven, if you will, on every one of the seven mountains in every area of society, receiving the kingdom of God, bringing his influence, his anointing, his presence there. And this is what it, uh, this is, this is, uh, you know, the thinking behind becoming a reformer. And so I just wanted to throw that out as, as, uh, 
uh, as I say, the, the slice of pizza that think can, things can be added to as well. It's good. What about you, Elizabeth? Are you going to add to that? Are you going to wait? Oh, um, sure, I can jump in. And we're so glad to have this time also with our, our friends. And yeah, the rest awesome. of you guys, Steve and Kat and Nathan. Um, we're excited to get to see you in a couple of weeks. Um, I would just throw out three quick thoughts. Um, I believe we're called in this time because of what is about to happen in the nations and the ripple effect of, of um, the breakthrough that we're, we're about to step into. You know, the worst thing that would happen is that we all didn't prepare ourselves and, and be ready um, to meet God where he's breaking through. And I think of three um, men in the Bible in particular that have stood out to me today in terms of being prepared in position. David, he kept his first love, his first love. He didn't get cynical. And um, I think it's a time where the tem there's a big temptation for us as reformers who know we're called to partner with God and bringing heaven to earth. It's, it's possible to get cynical. Um, and then I think of Gideon. Gideon was in this place of, you know, being surrounded by the enemy and he was hidden and he felt very hemmed in, which is a, a familiar feeling for us as a generation right now. But something interesting happened in that place. He's there and he's frustrated and he's saying, you know, where is the God that I heard about that showed up on for, for generations before me? And, and where is he now? And then the angel of the Lord came, and in that moment, he answered Gideon, and he said, go in this might of yours. And I believe that there was an aspect of his frustration that was actually his might. And so correctly discern the frustration that you have right now. It, it is a God frustration if you keep it targeted in the right direction. And God works with that. His frustration was based on the fact that he knew the character and nature of God was different than what he was seeing and experiencing. And so he used his frustration to call that down into this realm. And so there's the frustration that it's okay that we can live with for a little while longer and, and use it to call down his character and his nature for such a time as this in our generation. The third person that I thought of was um, Joseph, the coat of many colors, Joseph. And, you know, the miracle to me of his whole life story is that he went through so much betrayal and all of the personal um, journey that was just a testing. It was a testing after testing after testing. But what he preserved until the very time that God positioned him, he allowed himself to be prepared by not losing his expectation on God to be good. Mm -hmm. And he could have wrongly interpreted the dream you know, he had the gift of interpretation. We all have been given gifts for, for this, this season of history. But if we have the gifts, but we don't know the character and nature of God is to, first of all, care about what's impacting society. And then know that he cares enough that he actually has a solution that he wants to offer through us. Yeah. Um, and he preserved that within himself so that when it was Ooh. time to interpret the dream, he not only interpreted it correctly, but he became the very solution for the problem that, that right. surfaced. Yeah, right. And so that's those are my three things that I would throw out there for mm -hmm. reformers to be prepared and positioned. Well, just to piggyback just for a second on that. So you're saying he knew he was in touch enough with the character of God, despite the fact of the years of contradiction that he went yes. through. Is that even well, when he's told this dream that shows seven fat cows, seven skinny cows first, and seven fat cows, et cetera, et cetera, uh, that he doesn't just say, look, the Lord's saying judgment's coming, a famine, sorry, you know, just prepare. But he, he knew that the God he knew, despite the fact that he had lived under contradiction, is a God who offers yes. solutions. Yes. And he's a God who brought right. Right. solutions for a nation, even though they didn't have to get safe, or it's just because he's good, because he's good, because he's kind. That's, that's what he does anyway. So we're all passing tests right now that are actually mm. preparing us and, and positioning us for what is next. Yeah. That's so good. That's, that's so, so good. good. Um, if, if, is it okay if I can you hear me all right? Jump in, Steve. Yes. Okay. Oh, well, you know what you were saying, Elizabeth, just now, you talked about Gideon, and I've never until this moment uh, considered myself a Gideon. 
um, for one reason or another. I don't know why, but all of a sudden, like, that's what I'm looking for to describe what I'm going through, what I've been going through. So I'm like the guy, and people will say, well, what do you mean, Steve? You're not hiding out in the threshing floor. And I would say, because they'd say, well, you're doing the Elijah list, you're doing Elijah stream and all these other things. What do you mean? And I guess I would say, if you knew the things that I've been called to that I've just said, I'm not qualified to do that. I don't have the gifting. And uh, believe it or not, I was listening to Joel Osteen last Friday. And I left, listened for about an hour because he's very encouraging on XM radio. We get on that and I was driving along. He's talking about, don't say when God asks you to do something new, I'm not qualified because if he asks you to do it, that means he does have within Amen. you That's the ability right. to do that. And I stopped the car at a, I, I ran into 7-Eleven or something, and I said, and, I, and then I got back in the car and I said, Lord, here's the deal. If you show me clearly what you want me to do, something that I've never done before, that I don't feel qualified for, the answer is yes. And I made a commitment right there because I felt like this was my test, wow. which you just mentioned the test. And so I went into that two nights later. Uh, so Sunday night, I think, yes, yeah, Saturday night or Sunday night, Saturday night, something like that. Anyway. Uh, it could have even been that that same night. Doesn't matter. But the bottom line is, I was being given a assignment in a dream, and nothing worked out, and nothing worked out, and I was about to wake up out of this dream, and this amazing boom. Some of my most powerful revelations is one second visions, and this one second full color vision with here's the title, here's the name of this show, here's what you're gonna do, and it's something way beyond my ability to do, both contacts and gifting and talent. And so I said, that was as clear as any word I've ever received, Lord. The answer is yes, and I'm not backing up on it. And I just think that's what you're saying and seeing, Elizabeth, is that we're going through these tests. And God is saying, the way you prepare yourself is, what are you doing right now that, I, that I've told you to do? Or what are you not doing that I've told you to do? Right. So, right. That's so good, Steve. That's so good. Yeah, we have been hearing lately, putting apostolic feet to prophetic hope. We've got this uh, myriad of prophetic hope that's just shouting that there's something on the horizon. And we're saying, Lord, what does that look like tangibly? And Lord, how can we put apostolic feet to prophetic hope? The foundation of the church is on both the prophetic and the apostolic. So that means, Lord, we get these words that we couldn't know naturally, but the apostolic brings strategies. And we feel like that that's what's, what God's saying. I was thinking about, you know, we've known Steve uh, for quite some time and just the honor that he's had to interview uh, such amazing prophetic voices throughout the years. And he's been faithfully doing that and still doing that and opening the platform for emerging prophetic voices to come. And I, I, I go back to um, Kim Clement and the times that I heard him on Elijah List. And, and I feel like, Lord, the question is, like you said, for David's sake, I will do this. For so-and-so's sake, I will do this. And these are those times when those people who have prophesied would have given anything to see these days. And, and Steve, I just uh, does that put an excitement in your heart about seeing some of these things that you know, come to pass that you guys have, and you've spent years interviewing people prophesying, the Bob Joneses, et cetera, that have been speaking this? Do you see those things unfolding now? Yeah, it's, it's incredible. And I, I, I wrote to say, I think Johnny might have said, uh, sent me someone a few months ago, a young woman who was prophesying, and I loved what she did. And I just, without saying anything, uh, put her, began to promote her on the Elijah list, which has always been a kick in the pants for me to introduce someone new, not totally new, they're just kind of new to our list, and uh, to see her em emerge. And then she wrote to me and said, I can't believe you did this. I've always dreamed about being on the Elijah list. My mother and I used to watch you or listen or what, read you every single day. We did it to our home group. She's gone to be with the Lord wow. now. She said I would wow. inherit what she – and all of that. And, I mean, that is like the kick in the pants to see what God is <laughs> – how God is using and branching out all these things. Wow. And We don't know the people we are on the street are, are already affected. Their lives are already affected because we did this to this person, for this person who did this, who then affected them. And, and, they're, and now we're seeing them on the street. We have no idea our influence in their lives. It's, it's a kick in the yeah. pants, as I said. 
Yeah. So I, I, I think it's perfect setup. I'd like to pull that back to the topic of being prepared and positioned for reformation. So really what you guys are talking about, I feel like you're talking about Steve, like with your story and stuff is you purposefully ahead of time decided to be prepared for, to be ready, right? There's so many, so many examples in scripture to be ready for what God is about to do. So I'd love to hear from Nathan and Kat. What, what are you, as people are listening to this, they might be saying, oh, that's great for, for Johnny and Elizabeth and Steve and you guys, because you guys have everything figured out, but how do I be prepared? Um, I'd love to hear from you guys, like for the average person listening, how do they be prepared um, in this time that we're in? Yeah. So, so Kat, Kat, do you want to go next or shall I? Uh, you can go ahead. Okay, I'll go. I'll go. So I think I think the real key to preparation and the things of the Lord is to just spend time with them. I, I think sometimes we uh, come out of you know religious circles and we're kind of taught to fear God, and and some people don't understand that the fear that that's talking about is reverential fear, which actually draws us to Him and not being afraid of him because you'll never come to him if you're afraid of him and sin conscience sin consciousness actually causes us to feel unworthy and unaccepted and we haven't done enough and so it's almost like the lord's just calling every person into becoming intimate and not intimidated and when you get intimate you get close to him you start feeling the love the nurture the you know the grace the mercy you know that's the goodness that leads us to change our mind that really he approves us in advance and then causes us to be compelled with his compassion to begin to pursue him i think in romans eight twenty eight, all things shall work together Uh, for the good, according to those who love God and are called according to his purpose, when you know how good he is and you know he's working everything together for the good, you can't help but want to pursue him and just to receive from his love. And his love starts to cover over the multitude of sin. It makes you actually want to become more like him as, as we're compelled. So I really feel like that the Lord wants to affirm people that if his plans really are good and we believe it, And his plans are really to prosper and not harm, but give us a future and a hope that we can even hope for a brighter future moving forward, even when things don't look so good. And it's like the Lord's like, well, you trust me and actually believe that, that my plans are good, that I have your best interest in mind, and that I'm actually bringing you to the desired end that you had hoped for. And so, yeah, I just, I feel like that a lot of this has to do with being prepared in the secret place as individuals, gaining the intimacy. And then the beauty that emerges from that is boldness because he gives us the gift of righteousness. And as we believe that, you know, as a man thinketh, so he becomes, we become like what we believe that we are. And so he settles all the insecurity. Uh, you know, he removes the damage of fear and, and false hope. And he starts to begin to bring us into this process of sanctification where we become more like him from glory to glory. And then he starts to show us that this thing is fun, that it's an adventure, that something great is about to happen at every turn. And that's what positions us, I believe, to experience continual breakthrough from glory to glory. Wow. That's great. That's awesome. Kat, I was thinking about some of the inventions and things that are being released on the planet right now that will actually lead um, to what God's doing, the Reformation as we would call it. Um, Specifically, have you seen um, things that are about to be released on the planet invention-wise that will sort of unleash what God's doing next, things that we know he's interested in in bringing reformation himself to the planet. So are there things that you've seen that are on the horizon, about to be released, uh, whether it be science, medicine, things that are on the horizon that will release this reformation that we're uh, praying for, prophesying? Yes, I, I think first I would like to talk about God himself, since that's what he called me to do to reveal heaven to earth, reveal himself. I think the most important thing is for people to know that you're not being left out, that what he's got planned to be great for him in these days, the greater days of glory, and you need to understand what time it is. It is absolutely not the perilous times. It is absolutely not the tribulation. That is way down the road. We're entering into such great days. Some will be the inventions and the creativity that will flow from the body of Christ to this world. 
Some of it is you stepping into your place of authority and dominion to rule as a king with Jesus Christ. Maybe you never heard of that before. There's so many things that are being presented now uh, from heaven itself to this earth. The host of heaven, the army of heaven is invading this earth to walk along beside us to protect and keep us. I can also say this and I have to say it. Justice is coming in every way, in every arena, at every level. Uh, we cannot escape not having justice. The body of Christ has cried out for it. Uh, we, the, the prophets have heard that it is coming. I've seen many of what that will look like. There's no way people will escape being exposed on the left. The, the fake news, I can just say it because he's telling me to say it. I have to say what he's saying. The darkness is about to be held accountable in great measures. He will wipe it from the earth on purpose because what these days are really about is not about the dark days coming. It's about the greatness of his glory that is coming. In order for it to make us easier for us to, man to maneuver around this earth, to travel in and out and even through the earth itself, he must deal with the darkness first. All those in the government, in the business arena, in every arena. I know, Johnny, you know what I'm talking about. The mountains, they'll be removed from the mountaintops. Yes. God will place and position. This is about positioning. That's about part of your preparation. Position your heart to be open to what God is saying to you. If you can't hear him, make sure there's nothing in your soul that's keeping you from hearing him. Don't let soul clutter, fear, confusion, trauma, get it out of your soul. Yeah, Open on. up wide up to him and let him know you're doing so. He loves to hear you say, I will be willing and obedient. I'm seeking you. I'm seeking your face. I'm going to hear you for myself. I'm going to know you for myself. These are all key things to being prepared for what he's got for us because it won't be like it was in the days. Don't think it'll be like it was before. It won't be anything like it was before. It'll be far greater, far more glorious. The inventions, number one, that you just mentioned are so superior than anything we have on the earth. God is going to deal with the uh, blocking of the internet from us being stopped or held back. He's going to remove every single bit of that. It'll be a free zone for the body of Christ and the prophets to speak up what God has to say. And the others will have to move out or go someplace else. I can tell you right now. I know what God means when he says justice will prevail. Yes, He's come serious. On. Yes. About this. So look forward to great days for you, for your children, for your grandchildren, for your great grandchildren to be great for him. That's his purpose. That's what he's calling us to. That's what reformation is about change. Change is reformation. It doesn't mean it to be like it was before, so it will be okay. There's no way that's going to happen. We're, having, we're preparing ourselves now for greater wealth, greater revelation, greater demonstration of who he is. That's what is about to hit this earth. That's what I, I feel not impending boom. I feel impending greatness. Because that's what the Father's speaking right now. And he's saying it loudly. So look forward, plan a future with him and for him, and you will not miss the call he has for your life. Some people have a call. Some people literally will have a commission face-to-face -face given by Jesus Christ himself. Because this earth will never be the same again. That's what you need to prepare for. Not measure with what. You cannot measure what's coming the presence of God, the glory of God, the creativity in us and through us. That's why he timed your birth on the earth right now. And he called you. He wants you to make sure that your life and priorities are in order to hear him clearly. And when he says, go do this, guess what? Obey and go do it. You won't yes. be disappointed. <laughs> Come on. Yes, Come on. absolutely. Johnny and Elizabeth, jump in. Whoa, I'm so excited. I'm yes, so absolutely. No, that is amazing. That was that was good. That was uh, some machine fire from God right there for us, encouragement for our spirit. And that was amazing. And Nathan, that was uh, so powerful as well. You know, that's the part we can't we can't miss is yes. we want to be encouraged. We got to hang out with him who is encouragement. Be intimate, and, not intimate. Yeah. Yeah, she wrote, Elizabeth oh, wrote that so down. Good. Be intimate, not yeah. intimate. So good, yeah. So if you find yourself intimidated, it might mean you have to go back to that part right there and make sure you're uh, 
pickling in his presence enough that you carry that flavor above everything else. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I literally, I'm just so excited. I just can't hardly stand it. I, everything that we've all been going through for many years now is been all about what Kat just described. Mm -hmm. it, it is, um, there's a crescendo that's, that we're about to hit and it's not just in the spirit realm. It's going to spill over into the natural realm. And I, oh, I just feel so, um, I, I think I, I validated is the word. I feel like there's a validation coming to his bride. Mm. And he's going to validate our hearts mm -hmm. and validate the things we've experienced, the good, the bad, the ugly, and how it's all just converging into this, this, this moment in history that we've all been born for. That's right. So many things are about to make sense that we didn't even know weren't. Come on. Yeah. Amen. No, Man. I think huge. Yeah, I think some things, a lot of things are going to make sense that didn't make sense before tied into the reveal the justice component of god that's it's working right now it's working strongly behind the scenes but obviously we need it to be a public uh, a publicly revealed thing as well and that's going to happen and that's going to that's connected to all this it's connected to the whole move of god the breakthrough the reformation moving forward so yeah you know i'll add this too um i'm just prophetically sensing this that many people who are listening right now you felt like God gave you a piece. Maybe it was a piece of revelation. Maybe it was a vision or a dream. Um, and then right now, like in the light of whatever circumstances you find yourself in individually or us collectively, it just feels like it's not all that special anymore. And I feel like the Lord wants to tell you what he gave you, some of you many years ago, is so valuable and precious it it was just waiting for the time that is about to to be Amen. unleashed Good word. and that begin to value that again take inventory personally what what are there what areas of god have i become an expert on and each one of us have become experts on little just little pieces and and every little piece of him is huge and important and Every little little something that he gives to each one of us is huge. Your part is so valuable and so important. And it's it really literally is for such a time as this. Yeah, that's so good. I mean, if you ever put together a puzzle and you get to the end and there's one piece missing, like suddenly that piece, that little part of the trunk of the tree in that picture becomes very important because without that piece, the puzzle is just, it's like offensive that it's missing that piece. Right. So yeah. every piece is important. I've been, I've been taking some notes as you guys have been going through and I feel like each one of you is coming at this uh, from a different angle and I'm kind of hearing a theme through all of these that the positioned and preparation pieces, they all require, first of all, you have to be thinking about it ahead of time and doing it on purpose. Second of all, you've got to have intimacy with the Lord. Like there's no shortcuts for the preparation. I, I really feel like this is a common theme in all of your, of your stories. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Steve, anything on your heart? Share with us. Oh, there you go. Yeah. The one thing I'd like to say is that um, our mistakes are baked into the Lord's plan so that when he called someone, you know, Elizabeth talked about he called someone to do something a long time ago, then they got discouraged and said it's not important. The Lord knew when you would receive this word today, it's time to take that and look look at it again and get back to work on that again. And that was baked into the original word. He could see, he saw the, by the time when he first gave you that word, he knew that my 15 years might pass after you bailed on the word. And then you heard this word today or whenever you hear it, it's baked in. It became part of his master plan because he saw the future and said, I can work with that. I can work with them Amen. bailing on this for 15 years. And so that's what I'd like to throw out there is don't think it's too late for me. I bailed on the project. No, he baked in that mistake a long time ago. You're, yeah, you're doing great. great. He wasn't surprised. You're saying he wasn't no. shocked. <laughs> nope, yeah. not even a little. 
So we just call to the dreamers. We just call to those that have been waiting on God for yes, that unfolding. Absolutely. And we just say it's safe to dream again, to believe again. He's not forgotten that, what he's told you. He's not forgotten what he's prophesied. He remembers everything, that book of remembrance that is all written down, and he knows exactly what he's spoken to you, and he's not forgotten one word of that. Yeah, not not only is it okay, but it's needed. It's absolutely, absolutely needed. Nathan, uh, as we're as we're talking about this, you know, the preparation pieces um, and how important it is for every piece. I know that there's somebody listening right now that's like, "Oh, that's so cool," but they're thinking inside. My piece is not that important. Um, yeah. What What's your message to to that person? Yeah, I would just say, you know, every single person on the planet was designed and destined to do something great, something unique and something specific uh, that would give God glory. I'm, I personally, I, some people don't know my story, but the short version is I grew up in the church, preacher's kid. Uh, you know, I was taught, memorize the scripture. I learned a lot of scripture in my head, but I didn't really understand how to hear the voice of God. So I had more of a religious experience. And because I wasn't seeing the same God of the Bible manifesting on the earth through the people. I just felt like it was all a waste of time. So to me, it was hypocrisy. I didn't see the miracles. I didn't see the signs. I didn't see the wonders. There wasn't any right. prophecy. Right. There, I, I didn't hear the voice of God for myself, nor did I learn how to hear his voice by somebody who could hear his voice. And so I was just learning scripture and I was memorizing. I was using it almost as a weapon against people. And then it hurt people. And then it hurt me. And then I decided after two years of just kind of following my own way as a rebellious young man and living it up in Florida, you know, beach guy and, uh, you know, just partying really hard. And then I got to a point where I just was miserable and I actually hooked myself up to my exhaust pipe of my, my surfer van and I inhaled carbon monoxide, a black garbage bag over my head. I was, I decided that I tried the church and it wasn't really matching the scripture and it, it, it irritated me that it wasn't, I didn't really understand it. And then, and then I tried the world and that was empty. And, and I thought, well, gosh, I tried the church. There was nothing there for me there, there was a legitimately authentic. And then, then I tried the world and I wanted to die. And so God literally stepped in at my last breath, gave me new breath. I was unconscious on the floor of my van, seconds from death. God stepped in and said, now that you're broken, I can use you. Will you live for me? And at last, I finally surrendered to God. Like I actually said, I give you my whole life. What's left of me? You can have me. I couldn't remember anything. My mind was blown. They, they, they wanted to give me countless medication and have constant supervision, uh, you know, because I would forget things because I couldn't remember anything. I didn't know who I was or, or where I was. And anyway, some men and women in the church, uh, in a church, my dad came to rescue me, my, my pastor dad. And he showed up in the place where, you know, that people go to try to harm themselves. And my dad shows up and he said, son, do you know what day it is? And I said, no, dad, I, I don't. And he said, well, today is your birthday. He said, today, that you see, the devil tried to take your life, but the good Lord intervened. And I've come to take you home. And he gave me a big hug. And I started to cry because he was familiar. And uh, anyway, they laid hands on me in Jesus name. And the, my brain began to come alive. And I was awakened to the reality that I didn't even know that I didn't know God. I, I knew about God, and like you say yes to a friend request on social media, and that's good. But but it's like, if you don't really know somebody, if you don't talk with them, if you don't interact, and, and the Bible says he's the friend that sticks closer than a brother. So that caused me to really consider where am I and where do I need to be? And I began to surrender more and more of myself over to the Lord. And the more I surrendered, the more he surrounded. And I started to carry an anointing that I started seeing, you know, people get set free and it started to light my fire. And of course, and now I've been in ministry a long time. I'm 49. But, you know, I feel like I'm just getting started. I, I see who you have on the show and, and who's in this lineup for the Rise Summit. I, I just I believe that God is about to release something so incredible, something so like next level that's just going to bring a corporate breaker anointing that's going to unlock destiny and inheritance. Wow. And so many people, I, I, I know many have signed up. I know the in-person was sold out. Many are still signing up online. Um, but what I believe is there's, there's a move of God in the spark of this third great awakening that has begun 
and it's about to be released through this corporate, like what you said, I love the puzzle pieces. And every time somebody brings their gift, their unique calling, their, their talents and abilities, their heart to love God and love people, it, it just brings a clear picture every time another piece comes into the puzzle. And I just feel like God's saying that he's developing this master tapestry and there's a mending of the nets. That's the breaches and relational connectivity. Those who are uh, walking in forgiveness and surrender are going to get so full of God. And it's going to spark moves of God in all these little hot pockets of every of the seven mountains. So I'm excited about what uh, the, the Lord is doing. I think I touched on, you know, answering what you asked me to talk into. But but I just want to speak to those right now that are watching this broadcast. It's not by accident. There's hope for you. God has a plan. His plans are made. His plans are good. They're to prosper and not harm, to give us a future and a hope. He has pre-selected you based on what he foreknew. He approved you in advance. And he says, come to me, you who are burdened and weary and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. And my yoke is easy. My burden is light. You will find rest. For your soul. I love that in Matthew because God's saying, you come to me and you give me what you have and who you are. And, and, and I'm going to give you all of me and I'll surrender. I'll surround you in proportion to your willingness to surrender. If you want all of me, you got to give me all of you. It's not meant to work any other way. You're all in or you're not in at all. And if you go all in, my friend, you will be filled with the power of God and he will baptize you by water and by fire and by the Holy Spirit. And he'll grab you by the hand and he'll bring you into that paradise that you were meant to rule and reign with him from heaven to earth because you're a citizen here but you're seated in heavenly places so it's like we're in two places at once and that's what i love about a cat and i just believe any person can receive the supernatural empowerment by just yeah. saying jesus i need you i i tried it on my own it didn't work i, I don't want to relive that so i'm asking god that you would really be my lord i give you all of me in exchange for all of you and i ask you to use me for your glory i'm not here for me i'm here for you and i want to do what you ask and i want to say what you asked me to say nathan that's so good so stirred up cat i want to ask you a question um the excitement of heaven for what God's about to do. Okay. Can you talk about that for a little bit? Yeah, all of heaven is celebrating right now as probably the opposite of a lot of people right now on this earth. <laughs> they don't know what God's plans are yeah. or they just don't know him at all. But God does know what he's doing. And I can tell you what, he's about to show up and show off on our behalf for one reason. So we can begin ourselves to show up and show off for him. All this that we're doing right now that you're going through, God is preparing us for the next 100 years of glory. God is not willing to have gone through all of this and up to this time to build us up, to prepare us to be great for him and just dump it and let's all escape. He's not an escape artist, people. He is the God of creation. He knows what's going to happen. He's seen it. All of heaven has already seen the things that are about to take place and unfold before us. And yes, they're having a huge celebration. And the one thing that the father had told me was to encourage people to celebrate now. That's just calling things to be not as though they were. That's showing him that you trust and believe. Yes, he does have a plan for all of us right now. Yes, it's going to change for the better, not the opposite. The light of God is about to overtake the darkness on this planet. And I can tell you that when you had asked me before about the uh, creative ideas and William benches that are coming to this earth, there'll be a whole new way of transportation, a whole new fuel that you don't even know about yet. They'll be so inexpensive, a way for us to connect with each other that's not even here, but will be here quickly. Our lives are going to majorly be accelerated because of some of these new inventions and ideas. And the father said, I am not willing to give those to the wicked. Therefore, they cannot happen until I have wiped the platform Come clean, washed the darkness, pushed it back so that my people can have them, forth and prosper, take them around the school because God is totally into shifting governments for what? To shape the nation. We're going to shape nations for him. Just so far beyond your own imagination, but getting downloads from heaven, I really understand where he's at. I can be nothing but excited. 
And yes, they're all waiting for this moment when announcement will come forth. They'll be forced to make an announcement. You won't want to miss that announcement when it comes. That yes, yeah. the elections were stolen. The, the evidence is in. Uh, justice is going to come. And whether anyone wants it or not, Trump is going to finish his four years as president because God's already given him a plan to accelerate us on his plan, not man's plan. Think this, God's will, God's way. God's plan, not man's. Therefore, you have to have that. a mindset change Amen. and think that those things above connect with heaven because it is totally going to show up on this earth. Uh, what yes. if the scripture is Amen. about, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man, are not just about darkness? What if they're about people who needed to enter the ark of Jesus, needing to be saved, but when they exited that ark, they were ready to begin a brand new civilization. They were ready to release something on the planet that had never happened before. What if, as in the days of Noah, is equally about that? What if it's even more about that? This makes me so excited and about what heaven's doing. Absolutely. Now, talk to us about the RISE Conference and what's coming yes, up. the RISE Summit. Absolutely. <laughs> Elizabeth's going to... Yeah, Elizabeth. I've been working me. on Summit, the RISE Summit. Yeah, so... Uh, want to transition a bit for the last few minutes of this podcast and talk about this. I think you guys have literally every word that's been spoken is setting us up perfectly for this. Um, this summit is designed right from the beginning to be an amazing experience for the online yes. participant. We do have um, some people that'll be in-house. It's more of an in-studio experience, but it's really a digital summit, and I think it's going to be fantastic. There's an incredible list of people that are going to be speaking. We are so fortunate to be able to talk to you guys. All of you guys are going to be there um, and uh, our speakers there. So I think it'd be awesome if we just talked a little bit about the context of this, you know, position and preparation for Reformation and how it ties into this amazing event that's coming up next week, which, by the way, there's links in the show notes right below this video. There's still plenty of uh, space for the digital access, so you're going to want to do that. But I think maybe, Johnny and Elizabeth, if you could just, at a high level, talk to us about the importance of the RISE Summit and how it relates to this topic of being prepared and positioned. I'll let you guys arm wrestle over who's going to talk about it first, but um, what? Well, so, I, so set us up. As a generation, we're so used to people telling us, um, we're doing this just for you. And I'm actually going to tell you the opposite. I felt the Lord say that we are doing this for all of the sons and daughters that are out there who don't yet know that they're his. And they, more importantly than us, have been prepared and positioned to come into the truth of who he is and how he is. And we get the honor and the privilege of being a conduit of that reality to their hearts. And there are limitless ways that we can express who and how he is to them in these areas of culture, seven mountains. And so this RISE Summit is, um, is a launch. It is the first of many future events. The reason why we're calling it a summit rather than a conference is this is not a conference. This is a clarion call yeah. from heaven right. to reformers in the seven mountains. Come on, yes. And I just see God just summoning us. He's saying, come up here. I have cleared the tops, the middles, the bottoms of the mountain for you for such a time as this. And um, he has his, his heart and his mind set on one thing, and that's every one of those sons and daughters of his that he longs to have intimacy with. And we're going to get to introduce them to an aspect of God they've never seen before, they've never heard of before. It's so similar to what Nathan French was just sharing. And, you know, people think that they know God. We all think that we do. And yet there's always more. And he's irresistible when you really see him in the light of who he truly is. So this summit is, is a place for us to, um, to gather and a, a clearing call to gather around. And from this place, um, we just see it as a launch into the mountains and a way for us to validate the call that's on each of your lives, 
as a way to um, awaken those who may not understand uh, the message of God wants to be known in all the ways that he is. He's not just savior. He is, he's educator, he's provider, he, um, he's papa and family. All of these different areas of culture were meant to be a place where we actually experience him and how he is. And so you'll be awakened, you'll be equipped and important too, you will be connected. We're, we're timing the launch of an app with the summit. Um, it's free, it's free for individuals, it's free for churches and organizations, and it's going to become a platform, not for social media, but a platform for you to connect. And the kingdom of God is built on relationships. Relationships, first of all, with him, but relationship with each other. And we all have experienced it. You meet somebody and you're like, wow, God so wanted me to meet that person. And you get to discover together why he wanted you to meet each other. And it's usually got some kingdom purpose. And so this app right. is being um, made available starting at the, the summit um, as an opportunity to facilitate what God is already doing, which he's connecting us for the purpose of advancing his kingdom. And I love the heart, the spirit that Kat brings um, even on top of the incredible revelation the Lord gives her, her heart and her spirit just exemplifies the fun and the, the relational aspect of our Papa. He just loves yes. the fullness of life that we can find together. And, and I'm excited about us connecting, um, not just in the four walls of the church, but even beyond the four walls of the church. We're supposed to have relationships on Sundays and on every day, and, and as an overflow of that love that we have with him and with each other, the world gets to see the real God. And just briefly, you covered that uh, very well. Of course, RISE stands for Reformers Influencing Society Every Day. This message on the Seven Mountains, been preaching for 15 years, and really, you know, in the early years, it was about 10% of the body of Christ that was getting it, and it was just going right over the heads of others. But because of this, great awakening we're going into uh this whole this whole test that we've gone through the, the year 2020 but everything of these last couple of years has been a a rude awakening to proceed to great awakening it's been a rude awakening and so you can see now i don't know what the percentage is but there is a significant percentage of the body of christ now awakens like oh my goodness we can't just say uh, you know, we can't just prepare our rapture rugs to get out of here. Right. We have to be right. salt and light or whatever we don't salt with who he is, his presence is going to rot and then it's going to trample us. In fact, that's right. what we're experiencing is being trampled by spheres and mountains that we haven't, we haven't influenced before because we've embraced an inferior uh, word of God, inferior gospel. We haven't embraced the gospel of the kingdom. So just one last thing, Bobby, on, you know, even on as in the days of Noah, what's so awesome about that is you know that the ark was 300 cubits by 50 cubits by 30 cubits and 300 that's the gideon call he's calling the gideons 50 is the pentecost number filled with the holy spirit 30 is the number when jesus started his ministry so those maturely cool. filled with him and then it says the waters come this is what's happening right now and, and if you go in genesis 7 it says and then they begin to cover the hills and then they covered the mountains the water kept rising but the water did not hurt those in the ark. It only, you know, was an opportunity for those outside the ark. It'll be as in the days of Noah, but now he'll let everybody in. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Wow. But this water of his presence, there's justice in it as well. Yeah. It's gonna rise and it's gonna carry us to a new place. And ultimately where, where it settles is on the mountains, but it's the Mount Ararat. And that word Mount Ararat, Ararat means the curse reversed. That's what we're headed wow. for. That's what rising wow. is all about. It's about sons and daughters of the king being a part of the solutions of reversing the curse of what has taken place on the mountains wow. because we have defaulted from our assignment by being too heavenly minded, too ready to escape this world before we've finished or even begun our assignment. So it's going to be awesome. That's what we love about you guys is you've been so faithful to trumpet and blow the trumpet in Zion and just over the years, just bring clarity. And I just feel like the Lord is saying to you, Johnny and Elizabeth, that that trumpet call shall be heard in the land and in the nations. And you've been faithful, but now he'll open the ears of people to actually hear that trumpet call. So thank you for being so faithful over the years. 
Guys, let's go through. Nathan, Kat, Steve, jump in. What are you guys feeling the Lord's saying for the summit, and uh, how can we help people get prepared for it? Yeah. Well, I, I think, oh, let's see. I guess you can hear me all right. I think what's standing out in me is that those watching, if you can see the hearts, it hopefully exuding from us who are speaking to you today, you realize that we're not here to do a program to to have an event so you could pay for it right. so that right. some exactly. you know so a few of us can benefit that yeah I hope what you're reading is that from our heart we're saying God has stuff that He wants to give to you uh, and among those are four four of us here four or five parties now and then I don't remember how many people but everyone that has been hand selected to be on this summit has a heart just like what you're seeing if not more to give to you th tools and anointings and giftings and encouragements that you really need. So I really encourage you to sign up for that. Yeah, that's awesome. I think I would like to add what, um, I have a friend who's an unknown prophet, but extremely accurate. God just keeps him covert. And uh, he's hearing what others are saying, but I think what he just said to me this morning was so significant. God always has me do strange things, but you know, he's always done that with the prophets. He told me going to the very middle of America here, take a shofar, blow it seven times, and uh, play the song. The chains have been broken. And he, when he was done, he heard God say to him that this event, Arise, will be one of the greatest events that's taken place so far in the earth to bring the body of Christ together to realize who they are, to do great things never in their life dreaming that they could achieve because we're finally going to come together with one sole purpose. And that is to be willing and obedient to whatever God wants, looking forward to the great things in the earth and not thinking about the darkness and destruction that even may be around us now, but see through it, see beyond it, take authority over it. But that was his words that God was saying it would be one of the greatest events so far in the earth would be a rise. Yes, yes. Wow, the amen. Lord has given us wow. just a strategy for a global summit. That's what this is. It yeah. is a simultaneous global summit. So we're so excited. Kat, that was right on. Nathan, jump in. Yeah, yeah I just wanted to add to that. Uh, you know, what I saw was I saw just miracles breaking out on the on the digital platform. Yes. And I know that the Lord is not limited, you know, by time and by space. He's not confined to, to these barriers that sometimes we perceive that there are these restrictions. But it's like God's breaking out all over the world. And this third great awakening is really is coming for the nations. And the awake awakening, awaken means wake up, right? Revive means to make new. He says, I'm, I'm waking up my people to the reality I make all things new. And what I'm excited about though, is I see miracles and signs and wonders and even impartation. Some of the most powerful impartations that I personally received have been because the spirit of the Lord initiated in a Kairos moment where he said, I'm inviting you into something. Will you receive from me? And I've received these incredible you know, visitations, impartations. So this is what I'm seeing is visitations, impartations, uh, manifestations, on, miracles, yes. signs, wonders. And it's not limited to, you know, the sold out in person. Right. It, it's right. going to hit the airwaves and it's going to go through because God's going to start showing up because he quickens upon the words that are released through these uh, generals in the faith and God's going to release something. I believe that some people are going to watch it over and over and over and over. So I'm really glad that this platform and that you're able to do that. That's a huge benefit um, because some people are so busy taking notes that they're not really receiving what's being said, but to be able to push replay and go back and stop and pause and really meditate on what the Lord is saying. But there's definitely a, a divine moment here and the combination of individuals, very diverse, and it's going to bring a beautiful fragrance and an outpouring of God's Holy Spirit. Wow. That is so, that is so good. And it's, and it's exciting. We, we've been working really hard in preparations for this entire event. And I, I love what you, what you guys are saying. And I think it ties into the heart 
of what Johnny and Elizabeth wanted to do for this summit and what we're able to do in partnership with them. Um, we are using a series of technology and platforms and things that God has really put together and a, an entire model for this that really in kingdom isn't being done a lot. Yeah. So we're very excited about just the opportunity right. to bring this new way of doing a summit to the world. And Nathan, what you said is just spot on. Yeah. This is not yeah. just um, for people in Bend, Oregon. We're going to have thousands of people from literally all over the world. We already have over 20 nations represented. And we just released the ability for small groups and churches to create their own cohorts where they watch together. Yeah. 24 hours ago, and we already have 31 groups signed up. So uh, this is, God is definitely doing something, and there's a lot of opportunities for interaction. This is not a Zoom call with the camera in the back. This is a fully interactive experience designed around the digital experience. And I do believe we're going to have a ministry time, prophetic time designed specifically for online. We're going to have uh, the ability for all of the people that are attending online to connect in a one-on-one -on -one networking environment. It's all designed specifically for that. So this is, I feel like this is a, a bit of a tipping point. Like you said, Nathan, this is a, I think is, is probably a Kairos moment and it fits in right with what Kat uh, mentioned um, about what's happening right now, what God is doing. And I think this is going to be a very fun and exciting way to kick that stuff off. Um, so we're really, really looking forward to seeing you guys, um, and delivering this um, this event, which is next week, you guys. It's right. next, coming right up. <laughs> um, so if you're watching this, definitely um, you're going to want to sign up for this if you haven't done this. So find the link yeah. in the stream that you're watching and sign up for uh, the summit. If you want to host a small group, um, go on to the sign up link and then right there at the top it'll say something about small groups click that fill out the form our team will get in contact with you about small groups or churches for simulcasting and nathan as you mentioned this is going to be available for replay after the fact so i know for me sometimes something really hits me and it really it's important to me and i like to go back and watch it because pretty much every time i've ever done that god shows me something more so it's important that we want to be able to offer that as well. Bobby, as we start to wrap this up, what are your, what are your thoughts? I'm super excited for the impartation. The way that we've set this up is that people will have time to receive impartation from around the globe. And that's what we see this. It's like the glassy sea where every tribe and every tongue comes together to worship the Lord. We've just got that ability uh, through this Rise Summit. And Absolutely. again, uh, I'm super excited about that, yeah. I think, most of all. You know, I was just thinking about all of the things that you guys said were just so encouraging. And I just absolutely love that we have the opportunity to bring you guys on. Um, I, think, uh, I think of the story of the centurion and how he knew that Jesus had, had, Jesus had authority over the first Zoom call. So Jesus is like, hey, I'll come there. He says, actually, no, a Zoom call is fine. All you need to do is say the word <laughs> and he will be healed. And I really feel like we're getting re-stirred to realize that. Yeah. And one thing that, was, that I feel like is good that's come out of this uh, strange pandemic situation that we found ourselves in globally is that it's forced us to realize God isn't limited like we feel like he's limited, like we're limited. Right, And I think one of the things, and you guys all touched on this, that with this RISE Summit, what we're able to do is, is kind of say, hey, we don't have that limit. Let's connect everybody in the world together that wants to be part of this and go through the preparation and the positioning that's needed for the Reformation that's coming. So I, I'm excited to be a part of it. I think that's one thing that I love about what Kat Kerr is doing, just releasing a the angelic Absolutely. from all over the planet. Absolutely. If there's ever been a time to be proud that you work remotely, it's right now. That's right. That's I work right. remotely. I can s dispatch angels from here. We can pray. So you know, I've got friends that I'm praying for around the globe, and they're getting healed over the internet or over a cell phone call. And so now's that time. There's an excitement in the spirit, and we all know it, and we're super excited about it. That's awesome. You guys, thank you so much for spending some time on Eagle Mountain Radio today. If you're listening to this and you've never heard this before, you're definitely want to you're going to want to subscribe. Uh, you're going to want to look in the show notes and register for Rise. If you're listening to this sometime in the future, past March, um, you know, 26th and 27th of 2021, 
go look in the show notes and still connect. You're still going to want to hear the amazing content that these guys have um, been delivered. So until next time, we really appreciate your time and we will see you guys later.